YouTube. Hello Facebook, hello YouTube. How is everybody today? I hope everybody is feeling well and safe and happy. Gosh, it was a quick dash up the stairs this morning. I'm back in my bedroom for a bit of a makeover magic Monday. Having been downstairs in the kitchen all morning, setting up to do my piece on this morning with Holly and Phil, I hope you saw that. Lots of little ideas there, I guess following on from the theme of my five minutes, of little things that we can do. So on this morning I talked about exercise snacking, rather than real snacking, foodie snacking. Uh, talking about food, I had some ideas for going a low carb, especially if you're trying to eat a bit less wheat. I find that if I eat wheat, I get kind of a bit puffy and bloated. So over the years, I've been really dramatically cutting back my wheat. And if I do eat bread, I go for sourdough, as I find that doesn't bloat me so much. And doing things like making apple slice sandwiches. Did you see these? So lots of lovely English apples around at the moment, or British apples. This is one that I've spread with some nut butter. Mm, excuse me. I haven't actually had very much to eat today. Um... That's almond butter, which I really like, or you can use peanut butter. Peanut butter has a bit more protein in it than almond butter. They've both got good sources of protein, minerals, lots of vitamin E, obviously, in the almond butter. And if you want, you can make little sandwiches. So, you know, just put the two slices together like that, and it makes you a little bread-free sandwich. Mmm, delicious. My children actually really like them as quick snacks, energy-giving snacks. Mm. So that was what I was doing. So I did a bit of exercise, a bit of foodie snacking, and then just talking about the importance of staying hydrated. Those of you who've done dry January, amazing. If you are going back on the old vino, then I just shared something that I do, which is before I pour the wine, I fill up the glass with loads of ice cubes. And then it just means that your wine is diluted, you have a little bit less of it. And of course, as the ice cubes melt, then you get more rehydration from the actual water. But of course, you can't drink, I mean, you can't beat drinking plain water, can you? Mm. I always have to remind myself, actually, I just find, especially being indoors all the time, the days go by and the hours go by and I just think, gosh, where's my water, you know? And actually, a lot of headaches are caused by dehydration. So if you do get a headache, before reaching for the painkillers, reach for a glass of water first. It often really helps. Hi, Shireen. Greetings from Birmingham. Very nice to see so many of you already on uh, Facebook and lovely, lovely comments. Thank you. Thank you to all those commenting on uh, my Instagram, talking about the body tapper. OK, so before I get into chatting with Ruby... Um, yeah, I did my body tapping this morning. This is the Hey You method. We've got 20% off these with Liz Loves. So grab it while you can. I did a post yesterday because I thought the offer actually ended at midnight on Sunday, but it actually ends at midnight tonight. So if you're watching me on a Monday in real time, then this is really brilliant. You just have tap it all over your body. I did it this morning after getting out of the shower. And uh, they also have those amazing gua sha uh, jade um, facial massages which are brilliant the shape is just lovely and of course the jade stays cold lots of you have been doing my five minute teaspoon massage which is great as well and of course it means that you've got something perhaps already in your kitchen drawer that you can use pop your teaspoons in the fridge first make sure they're nice and cold and then you can use them particularly really good for puffiness and dark circles around the eyes um, and yeah, so whichever way you do it, actually, it's a really good way just to get your lymphatics going and get a bit of glow. That's what we all want, isn't it? A bit of glow on. So let's see whether we have Ruby in the house, because Ruby, you may remember that she had a, a makeup range called Ruby and Millie. She's been a session makeup artist for decades. I've known her for, gosh, I don't know how many years we're going to admit to, maybe 30, maybe more. So Ruby Hammer MBE, there she is on Instagram. Now, those of you watching on Facebook and YouTube obviously won't be able to see Ruby, sadly, because it's only Instagram that splits the screen. Hello, Ruby, and she is now with me on Instagram. Don't you look gorgeous? I have to say, you don't look a day older than when I first met you, which must be at least 30-something years ago. But neither do you, Liz. <laughs> Neither do you, so it's a shame. <laughs> We're obviously doing something it's right. It's, it's so, shame. so lovely to see you, sweetheart. It really is. You too, you too. I'm, I'm feeling, just having seen you, 
I'm speaking to you in real time now because we've spoken yeah. on the phone. Yeah. And I just watched you on this morning as I was putting on my makeup. Oh. I watched you and there's some great tips there. But I just thought, you look stunning. So do you do your own makeup? Because there's nobody else. Yeah, no, there's nobody else. It's just me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're very good at doing your own makeup. You look stunning. I love your hair. I'm not usually very good at doing my oh, hair, but thank you. I've got to say, we are that era where we are a lot older yeah. than we look, and I think both of us. So yeah. people think, oh, is it just my genes? No, you've got the same genes. You've been blessed by the same thing. Where yeah. You know, I mean, I think, you know, definitely in terms of, of looking young, and I don't think we should get too hung up on looking young. But I think it's about looking well and, you know, sorting out any issues with your skin, definitely. But I think, yeah, number one, you've got to choose your parents really carefully, you know, because that's, it's the genes, isn't it? But then, you know, for me, I've found over the years, I've been so lucky to be working in the world of wellness because... I'm on HRT, so my body's full of estrogen, which we know is so good for our skin. It's kind of creating all that elastin and collagen, plumping the skin. Um, my lovely eldest daughter, Lily, I don't know if you remember Lily, you probably didn't I have, do, see her since she was, like she was that. about that high. Like that, like that, like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's now just hit 30, believe it or not. Um, and she's got this amazing LED mask that she introduced me to. So LED light, I think, is really good. And then, you know, gut health, things like kefir, lots of probiotics. Are you into all of that? Do you watch your gut? Totally, because everyone, look, as a makeup artist, and I have been a jobbing makeup artist, and it is quite frightening when you hear it and think, <gasps> three decades, because there was once I just had to sort of redo my press um, thing for the, for, the, for the PR company, and it said 25 years, and I said, um, that was almost five years ago you need to up it to like it's more like 30 years now since I started assisting and being a makeup artist so people straight away will ask about what they can do cosmetically yeah. but as you and I know that is the icing on the cake so yes mm -hmm. there are so many wonderful things you can do with your cosmetics but nothing is going to replace either in the short yeah. term or the long term how genuinely your skin yeah. You can't keep covering up with concealer and foundation and a blurring powder if, if you're not eating well, yeah. if you're not sleeping well, if you've Sleep. not got oxygen. Oh, my goodness, oxygen. Body. You know, absolutely two fundamentals that are free. Exercise, you know, getting that glow in your skin through, you know, just doing, even if it's just five minutes of something really intense. And lots of sleep. You know, I knew that I was doing telly this morning, I mean, so I made sure that I had loads of sleep the last couple of nights. You are very lucky because I'm probably at the tail end of my menopause. So I, I'm 59 now, and it hit me when I was 50. <laughs> you look about you look about 20. Year, if you said to me, Ruby, I'm 29, I'd go, yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, you know. bless you. I'm going to be 60 in December. So I'm just saying that it hit me when I lost my mum. So when she was diagnosed with cancer, yeah. they literally said she's got a couple of weeks to live. Oh, and overnight, my hair went grey at 50. So until then, touch wood, I didn't have any greys. And my period stopped. That was it. And I was oh. thrown in. And a few months later, or, you know, almost a year later, I went to the doctors and they said... Um, I think you're, it's both. You're actually in the grieving process, which also can have those effects. Yeah. Or you are, you know, they did the blood test and I was in the menopause. Now, I'm very curious. You said you're on HRT, so you've totally. got all those collagen. And I didn't go on HRT. I didn't do anything, not because I don't agree with it, but it just, it just didn't happen. And now I'm at the end of it. There's no point going on it now, I don't think. There is. Um, oh, my goodness. Well, you and I need to talk. Well, yes. Do you know, I mean, I wrote a book about the menopause. Uh, I started researching it maybe five, six years ago. And I was absolutely convinced that HRT was not necessary. It was unhealthy. Unhealth you know, it was going to be breast cancer, all of that. that. Yeah, and yeah. actually, I did a lot of research because my work is, is very much evidence-based and I connected with a lot of academics, professors. I came across Louise Newson, the menopause doctor, who's amazing. 
And she put me right because, number one, the, the breast cancer studies were very flawed, and I've written a lot about that, so we don't really need to worry about that. We need to look at risk in relation to benefits. And right. just, just very quickly, because I know we're going to talk about your lovely makeup. No, no, and, but... it's interesting because at the moment I can't get to my GP or anything like that. So I've kind of, it was hard at the beginning. I had, I had all the hot flushes. I had very yeah. break in my sleep. I had anxiety. I'm not normally anxious sure. at all, but I really faced that. I had brain fog, extraordinary. Absolutely. And I just yeah. walk across the street to collect my paper with my phone in my hand and slippers on, freezing cold winter, no keys, no money, and standing there thinking, what the hell, how do I get yeah. back in? And my husband would have to, like, bike over the set of keys to let me in. So I had all of that, sleepless nights. And I managed yeah. doing it with, with herbs and things. Now I'm at the end, but I'm thinking, I took supplements, you mm -hmm. know, like, black or harsh and that I, sure. but I was wary because my skin did suffer it was sort yeah. of breaking out here and paper thin yeah, here yeah. so yeah. I'm now thinking I did do products I did do supplements mm -hmm. but would I now need the HRT again okay. and I need to see someone. All right, so in, in, in a nutshell, uh, and I'm not a doctor, so this is not medical advice, but I've written four books now on menopause and I'm an yes. ambassador for yes. the menopause charity and I, you know, I'm, I'm involved in that world. Um, statistically, the benefits outweigh the risks and any woman should be able to get HRT relatively straightforwardly from a GP below the age of 60. So that's according to the NICE guidelines. Okay, so if you want to rush into your surgery before December, I'm gonna have to. You, but yes. but that but that you don't have to. You know, it can be more of a struggle after sixty, and it depends how enlightened your GP is and how well up they are um, on it. And unfortunately, a lot of GPs are not, and there's I'm lots of reasons for that. My GP, okay, to be honest, because you don't see the same person. You know, now I well, don't. Well, you never know. You you never know. I mean, do have a look. Go to the menopause doctor website. Um, and have a look because when you think about estrogen because what you're doing with HRT it's nothing it's not artificial it's not a drug it's replacing hormones so if you think a diabetic will replace insulin or somebody yes. with a thyroid issue will replace thyroxine. What we're doing is re we're replacing lost estrogen. And yes, of course, you can help control some symptoms with herbs like black cohosh or whatever. But what it doesn't do is replace the estrogen. So all the things that you've talked about, lack of sleep, brain fog, cognitive function. We have estrogen receptors in our brains. That's why when we, you know, we get brain fog and loss of memory and anxiety because our estrogen levels go down and our estrogen receptors in our brain lose that vital estrogen. You know, women run on estrogen. It's, it's our hormone, it, everything from our skin to our pelvic health. You know, I used to have loads of UTIs. I've talked about that, cystitis, all of that. And that's because I was losing estrogen in the pelvic area. And bone health, a lot of people get misdiagnosed with arthritis and achy joints because they're losing the estrogen from their bones. So I'm, I'm going to send you a link, Ruby, because I've got two downloads. I'm going to take you up on that because, you see, that was the very thing. Like, my late father was a doctor. Mm -hmm. And when my mum died, she was 67. But she had been doing her menopause. She was on HRT. Yep. She did put on a little bit of weight when she had to watch what she did. But, you know, my father suggested she should be on. So the thing is, I didn't have that as well. And you've got to think this is nine yeah. years ago. It's only in the last, I think, in the last two to three years that people talk about it openly like we are now. It it's was so still right. a bit, of, hush, hush, you wouldn't talk about it. No, you it. wouldn't. People talked and about the, the change. The you change. Know, the change. All the, that's, all, that's all that was said. Dirty, nudge, nudge. Oh, she hasn't. She hasn't had a you know good scene to for how long, and you know all that kind of. It was always. Yeah. My my present husband is ten years younger, eleven years younger than me, and he works with all these young people and all that. And I was like, 
I want to tell him about all of this. And there was still a little bit of taboo. You'd speak to your friends about it. I'd speak to my mum, but God bless, I didn't have a mum. I did what I could myself. But now you can openly say it and nobody's going to suddenly think, oh, she's past it. Mustn't talk about that. Not at all. The crowd won't think of her as being in anymore. You know, so we've bypassed that stage and we're only going to get better. So send me the info. Completely. So I've got two downloads. One is just all about menopause, healthy menopause. And the other one, when you've read that, is the truth about HRT. So okay, read great, those two, great. seriously. I'll be very grateful. I'll be very grateful. And it is I'm never right. too late. My mum, and she doesn't mind me saying this, I've, I've asked her if I can mention it, and she said, absolutely, go ahead. You know, she's uh, in her early 80s now, and she's just gone back onto HRT so that she can sleep better. So anyway. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> um, listen, so, it's not just about looking good, it's, it's the emotional... Oh, you, know, that, you know, and we're all feeling so anxious, aren't we? It's, it's that anxiety, and we just need to try and calm that. And just to get some balance, you know, I used to have flashes of such rage, you know, and, and all of that, wow. it's, it's... My, anyway. My flashes weren't so bad, but I got the night sweats where I literally would have, and my husband is quite a light sleeper, so I'd sort of, I'd be drenched, and then I'd sort of fall out of bed, trying to silently creep on my feet. Oh, Ruby, that's out. so awful, no, honestly. Like, there there is lots of good news out there, so no, we'll, sorry, we'll pick up was, offline if we need to. <laughs> that was about five years ago, so now, thank God, I'm not in that mode anymore. Yeah. But you get the odd flash. Sure. Or just something sets you off or some bit yeah. of tension or something you hear or especially now with our lockdown I think that this particular lockdown is harder it's really hard. on everybody than it's the really first hard. one has been yeah I mean please God the end is in sight because it's you know what it's doing to everyone <laughs> Mental health, and actually, I was I was on Twitter um, looking at some of the psychiatrists who've been, you know, campaigning to to get people out of lockdown because they're saying the problem is there's all this negative stuff coming at us, and it's lowering our immune system physically. So so many of us are feeling physically unwell as, as well as mentally. It is, it is, it, it's in every aspect, and also. What breaks my heart is, yes, I am very worried about bringing the, the, the figures down for COVID, but then there are the subsidiary things where yeah, of course. they can't handle the people that have been diagnosed with cancer or other yeah. life-threatening diseases. Yeah, yeah. They have been put on the back burner. We're going to lose those people, God forbid, God forbid. It's such As a big issue. When we're battling yeah. this my, virus. my last word actually on estrogen and then I promise to shut up about it is uh, <laughs> what I've been podcasting about recently is the link between estrogen and our immune system because I haven't okay. realized yes. this and this is why women are being less badly affected in intensive care than men it's they think they're doing studies to confirm it but there's very strong initial evidence to suggest that it's because of the estrogen which is a vital part of our immune system. So, you know, if you roll that forward, hopefully when, you know, COVID is a, hopefully a distant memory, yeah, you know, yeah. for us as women, as we age, making sure that we have a strong immune system is really important. Totally, because after, while you're in the menopause, it, it kind of, we are with a handicap then about all aspects, about your mental health. So it's not just a physical thing. I mean, I've got, I've been skinny Lizzie my whole entire life. I have got, and that's down to this um, lockdown and a little bit before the other one, a bit of a, it's a thickening. Yes. It's not big compared to anybody else, but I can only compare with me. So yes. this is the most I've ever weighed, which is fine on the face and all of that because yeah, it adds a bit of face. volume to the face, <laughs> but not to the middle section. So all my jeans, my trousers, so everything looks great waist up and just slightly hips down as far as Okay, well, one, one last bit of good news. I mean, I feel like I'm the, the you know, the, the advocate for, for <laughs> estrogen, and I promise you I have no links to pharmaceuticals. I don't accept no, any no, no, money or anything. No, no, it's just wonderful to it, hear. It, it's I'm pure probably. evidence-based research. But what happens, I don't, if I can stand up so you can see, our fat distribution changes with age, and yes. that's why middle age spread is a real thing. We need estrogen to control our fat distribution. Estrogen helps prevent the deposit settling here of the fat. So you tend to find that when, you're, when you have estrogen, you get your waist back. So what you've described, that thickening around the middle, 
is very likely due to lower levels of estrogen changing the disposition of your fat and where it's deposited. Okay, I mean, I anyway. Mean, and then I guess we didn't get on here to talk about no but everyone's i think enjoying enjoying the chat you know here my my lovely community you know tend to be women of a certain age so hopefully it's all very relevant but let's go back to your career because you started all those decades ago as a makeup artist working for magazines i think that's when we first met actually in on sessions yes, yes. I, I actually we go so far back that i can't actually pinpoint when we did meet exactly it's like you've always been there back. Yeah, it's that far back, so it's and great. Tell, tell us about your career. How, how did your career start and, and, and what have you been doing over well, the years? I I was a, I started off, I'm an economics graduate. So I literally finished university and I was, I'm not a trained makeup artist, so I assisted. I had the good fortune to assist and at that time I'd already got married and I had my little girl. So my Rena is 34 now. Oh, if you're nice. Lily's 30, my daughter's 34. Mad, so isn't it? I always had my little girl and so I assisted and people think it's, uh, it's, it's a kind of catastrophic rise. It's not. It's a no. true slog. You know, you, you gradually do some horrible jobs but you, you're learning as you go along all about the technical aspects of in those days it's Polaroid, there's no social media, there's not yeah. instantly seeing what things look like, you know, it's yeah. not digital. You have to hone your skills. And I was lucky enough, I worked with some great people, some great photographers, editors, hairdressers, um, magazines, and um, so I honed my skills, got myself great agents, and just worked along. The thing is, at, the, at anybody's career at that time, you either had to go off to Paris or New York, and that was where it was all, you know, so people like Di Kendall and Pat McGrath and all the sort of real artists that are avant-garde and that I look up to I could have had a chance of doing that but I would have had to leave my family right. and go to those you know you'd have to follow the work yeah, totally. so I made a conscious decision that I am going to do the best work I can while being UK based so I'll go on trips I'll go on a week here five days here one day here catch the red eye come back but my family is here yeah. my daughter's here everything is here I'm going to base it out of here so that that's what I did but so in the evolution of that we me and my ex-husband we brought Aveda to this country we we launched that Gosh, here I've totally forgotten that link with you Aveda do, so that's amazing back. isn't it <laughs> I remember so, when Aveda launched and you know I was working as a beauty editor and it was just such big news it was a really revolutionary brand is it horse met, horse yes horse Horse Racklebacker. Racklebacker, so yeah. We, um, you know, we launched it. We launched it in Harvey Nichols to begin with, and that was unheard of because it was a, a salon uh, style, predominantly hair care and a few bits of skin care. They, they had a few bits of makeup, but you know, we put it in a department store, and then we yeah. had a salon upstairs, and you know, we were on QVC with it, and it was yeah. a shock horror. How could you do that? It's a luxury brand. And I know, same. I had that same journey. We did that multi level <laughs> yeah. market. We thought it should be in a department store, it should be with the professionals, and it can be in QVC. You don't have to do it tackily or horribly. You know, sure. we did beautiful backdrops and we had great yeah. experts on there. I went and did the makeup slots. And as you know now, everybody's clamoring if you're not on QVC, there's a problem, isn't there? Everyone's trying yeah. to get on there. I know, and it's so it. crazy how, yeah. how it's yeah. changed. So, from that, I was working away all the time, and even now, I'm still a jobbing makeup artist. Yes, mm. I don't do as much because we're in COVID. Um, I'm of a certain age. Um, there are lots of young people out there. It's great, but I'm still going to be a jobbing yeah. artist because I love that. I yeah. love ha horning and still harnessing my skills. Yeah. Then that took us on to, from Aveda, Boots first came to us to say, can we have a Vader in Boots? And I remember George Weiss was going, no, of course you can't have that. That's in a department store. You guys are just going to copy it and then do your own version of no. But in those conversations is how Ruby and Millie 
came alive because right. in saying no to them, you're not going to get a radar. Then they'd be, you, you know how brainstorming and you talk to yeah. people, it took it further, and that was how Ruby and Minnie came about yeah. in 1996. And that was your makeup line, your own makeup that line. That was a makeup line. It took two years to create because it was a massive line. Yeah. 1998, again, we launched in Harvey Nichols next to the Chanel's and Yves Saint Laurent's of the wow. world. And yet here it was, a Boots owned brand. We did all the work for it, but we put it on there. And it was another first. You know, they, yeah. Boots have never done anything like that since. Um, yeah. And it was... Then it was in one of the bigger boot stores, and from then, you know, it was a 15-year project. We, we've done it, but we never really, we didn't own it. We had to take it further. We were not able to, yeah. and in the end, we thought, you know, before it gets diluted and shoved out, let's call it a day while we're up there, and yeah. that's how it stayed. Um, yeah. And then from there, you tip the topping away. Um, I had a, I had a, a couple of years since my mum died where it was a bit low and then mm. gradually I could feel another itch. You know, people are always saying, what are you going to do, Ruby? Are you going to do something else? Are you going to do this? Are you going to do that? And I, I, I just wasn't ready. I just wasn't mentally. And when you bring things to the marketplace mm. and you well know that you've had your own brand, the energy mm. and the resources you need from all aspects you've got to be prepared and then some so i yeah. thought you know what i'm not physically strong enough to do this i'm right aren't i all right it's, so, yeah it, it it is all consuming and yeah it's, it's hard you know it's you know, it was interesting what you were saying about, um, you know, being an overnight success or whatever. There, there's a great line where it takes at least, you know, 10 or 20 years to become an overnight success. And, it, and it's kind of true. People often don't realise what goes on behind the scenes. There's so much. There's so much. And yeah. you've got a family. You've got a partner. Sure. You've got children. You've got, yeah. pet, you know, all of that. So <laughs> since I lost my mum, and, and, you know, by that time, my dad had died 15 years ago, I, that kind of... You, you get let down of something, mm. but it means I just wanted to do something smaller, more concise, than looking at the marketplace, and, you know, there was Pat McGrath, there was Charlotte Tilbury, there was all these huge big brands yeah. launched, and all with the power of social media and all of that, and I thought, yeah. oh, my God, I'm like, I'm like Rip Van Winkle, I've been asleep, I've just woken up. <laughs> what is all this, you know? So then I realised, okay, I'm just going to do it small and dedicated. So I launched Ruby Hammer, the brand. <laughs> I love this. And do you know, guys, uh, I'm so thrilled to have Ruby today because we've had such issues with the post. Um, and your, your lovely samples that you sent me, which we'll talk about here, have just arrived. They arrived this morning and my... Oh. You know, I was before I went live on this morning. I was like unpacking, at like quarter past eleven, going right, quick, quick. You know, we've got this. The, the, I love this bag, but before let's talk about anything else. I'm a, a bit of a bag girl. I have to say, what is this made of? Because it feels amazing. It's so this. I mean, look, I'd love to take full credit for it, but I've got to say, this is inspired by Ren. By who? Ren. Sorry. Ren. Ren. Oh, by Ren. I love Ren. Another great brand. So you know they have. They have yeah. the sort of uh, uh, the, the sort of paper bag version. Yes. And I, I suggest I went to them and I said, "Do you mind if I'm I'm going to be inspired by?" It? And I'm very honest. I didn't think it up. I, I was inspired by them, and I thought I'm going to do two versions. I'm going to do a red one. Yeah. And I've also got a white one. There's a white one. So guys, it, imagine this in white with Ruby Hammer in red. Really oh, classy. Way. But do you know that's what I love about you, Ruby, is about your openness and honesty and sharing. And, you know, there's, you know, it's very hard to reinvent the wheel. And I think if you see somebody do something well, you know, as you say, just go and say, I really love this. You know, can I do this too and, and give you credit for it? Well, <laughs> it's, it's made out of craft paper. So Ooh. everything, even the zip is recycled. So it's wow. totally 100% from recycled products. It's recyclable. Yeah. And it's, it's water resistant. It's not yeah. waterproof. Do you know nice. what I mean? I wouldn't give it love a shower. But you can wipe off. And you see how colour coordinated I am? I knew yeah. that I was going to be with you, Ruby. So I thought, Ruby, what, what have I got that's kind of Ruby <laughs> inspired? Oh, oh, very nice. I love, the, I love the burgundy with the brighter. 
Oh, well, this is my little exercise top that I was I was wearing on the, the show this morning. Now, look, tell me, because, of course, it's, it's more than just a bag. It's what's in the bag. Um, and you're going to have to talk me through this, because I literally have just received these. So what, 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 what should we look at first? Okay. which I call my magnetic brush. Yes. Magnetic so brush. When you take it off. Oh, it's magnetic. It up, yeah. That is clever. Love that. Oh, my goodness, it's got three little bits to it. Yes. So there, we only launch with the first one. You're holding the second one. Okay. And so, I'm holding the first right, one. Right, this is the first one then. So this is... Yeah. So look, it has three heads. And you can work Ooh. it, Liz, for, for liquid, powder, and cream. All textures. Now, it has a slanted brush, and it has a, a crease one, and it has a small smudge-proof one. Okay, by the way, all we do it. have Liz Love, so I should mention this. Liz Love's all yes. in capitals on Ruby's website. Don't get so carried away here. Thank you for that, for 20% off. You're super generous. Most welcome. Um, Most so, welcome. okay, so look, so this one, I love this. This is really so that soft. One, all of these, all of these brush heads, you can use your way. Okay. So the first one you're holding, you can do crease work, you know, okay. close to the eyes if you want to put eyeshadow on yeah. and just make it, you know, when you've got slightly hooded eyes and you want to do all of that. That feels lovely. Yeah. Really feels, nice shape. They feel great. Yeah, they're easy. really nice. They're all synthetic brushes, so you're very easy to wash and wipe. Lovely. But also, if you were not using it for eyeshadow, you can use it to do concealer. Oh, yeah. To point it on, to apply it flat. So all of these, you mustn't think there's just one way to hold it or it's only got one purpose. Okay. You can do whatever you want mm. with it. So that's that one. And then this one, one. I love that shape. Yeah. How, how are we going to use that, that sort that of shape of brush? That is a gorgeous shape. So look, you do your eyebrows with it. Eyebrows. Oh, oh, yes. Right? You can smudge a liner pencil with it. You know, like uh -huh. when you do that, you can yep. pull it out. You can do underneath. It's nice and fine. Do you see how fine it is? So it's it's multi-purpose. I like that a lot. Then the last brush in that section is a smudger. Oh, a smudger. <laughs> so that's really good for close work near the eyes. You know, when you're trying to do a smoky or you're trying to get it into the end of your brows or anything yeah, like yeah. that. Nice. As a push, you can do your lips with it too. Okay, great. Obviously, it's either be, a different brush or wash it. it. But the nicest thing is, see, all of these with the lid, which is very COVID-friendly, but when I thought of it, it was 2018, so by the time I launched in September 2019, yeah. I was thinking of this as multi-purpose in your handbag, drop it in your desk when you're at work, yeah. take it to travel, which hopefully the desk work and going to travel will come back to us, hopefully, yeah. you know, when we battle this demon that we're facing. Yeah. So that was the first one I launched with. Okay. But last month, we launched the second one. This one, okay. Yes. Gosh, hot so off the press. that's my magnetic brush number two. So if you look at those heads, the first one in there is a spoolie, so to brush back your brows. Oh, that is yeah. nicely made. I can see that. That's very nice quality. So, like, now that we're not going to our brow bars and not doing anything, we all need to just, if you brush up, you're already going to look awake and alert. Totally my, my tip is to brush up. To sort of separate those cloggy mascara mm -hmm. or clean it all up that way. You know how sometimes you've gone a bit too much and you need to just clog yeah. it up? So, again, it's got a dual purpose. Nice. There. Nice. Then, anyone who knows me knows I love a lip brush, which you could use, like I said, from the magnetic brush number one, but I love a square tip brush. Oh, okay. This is, this is from my square Ruby and Millie tip. days. Like my lip brush in those days was square tip like this. Like it just means you've got better control and you can 
I and love that. Actually, when you put your lipstick on with a lip brush, and I'm going to use um, one that I've got here. This is another great British brand, actually, Delilah. Yes. I don't know if you know that. Yes. Um, but I just find that it lasts so much longer. Well, it's about control. It means you can line and fill and deposit colour very, very, very quickly. Okay. And um, not waste time. So in the end, when I thought I'm going to do my second brush... I'm really going to go for a square tip. So, again, people can use it for concealer, can use it for cream eyeshadows, but it means I've got a uniquely great tool to be able to use like that. Mm. Very nice shape. Yes. And then there's a third one, isn't there, in here? The third one is a very fine eyeliner nice. tip. Now, some people yeah. don't use a pencil, but if you... If you did a pencil and then you wanted to smudge it out, you okay. can, because you can feel that brush is soft enough to blend, but still give you control. Yeah, it's very good texture. And very it's good. wonderful for people that use gel eyeliners. You yeah. know, like if you're from Delilah, from Bobby Brown, from whoever. Yeah, gel you know, eyeliners are our, so good, there aren't are they? so many people are gel eyeliner person, so you can use that. The other little thing to just mm. say to everyone is I'm a makeup artist, so I like to use it with the three barrels because it gives me control. That's what I'm used to. Okay. But for normal women, what I love is to reduce it by one barrel, right? When you've got two there, it's because if you're looking in a mirror, you can come closer. If yeah. you're standing in front of a mirror, it gives you that. The okay. one thing... I wouldn't suggest is don't make it one because it makes it very Too hard to control. Yeah. Okay. Too so little. always keep it as. That's so clever, isn't keep it? it oh my it. goodness. It gives that... you, you know, so you, 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 you're, yeah, <laughs> so. And then that way, by being able to put it in with the lid, that just keeps it hygienic, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Completely. Especially now. Do you know? I was just thinking this the other day. I found. If I, I don't know if I've got some on my. Yeah. Here. So when I buy makeup brushes, you know, they always come with these little plasticky things. Yes, yes. But they're a faff and, you you know, you can't kind of fit them back on very easily, you know, because you, everything kind of mashes well, up together. The hairs. the hairs get all blur. They really they, do. Yeah. And you think, actually, I don't want to keep my makeup brushes out, you know, exposed to the air. I want to have them covered. But I lose these. They, I drop them or, you know, I can't be bothered to put them back on again after I've used them because I'm rushing. But if this is automatically covered, what a great idea. It's automatically covered, and they're very easy to wash the hairs. You know, just a little bit of a liquid, something, you wash it, bring it out, and lay it flat, like yeah. everything else, lay it flat, and they dry because they're synthetic hairs, vegan, mm. cruelty-free. It dries in... So would you minutes. use a bit of soap or a bit of shampoo? How do you like to bit wash your brushes? Soap, a bit of shampoo, a bit of... There are so many wonderful brush cleaners out there now because everyone is obsessed with sanitising and hygienically yeah. taking care of their things. So yeah. there are lots on the market out there. My Kit & Co, um, uh, Japanese, Beauty Blender is my original favourite. So they do nice. it in a liquid or they do it in a solid. All of that. Nice. They're nice. out there. They're out there. So what else have we got here? Because you've got other other things here. Okay, oh, that's so then, very fine. Look at that. So then the latest yeah. launch of the two you've grabbed there is a liquid eyeliner, which is fantastic. Oh, my goodness. So this is an actual colour. Yes. I've only done it in black because I think... Look how yeah. fine that is. It, it can be fine or it can be as thick as you want. You can literally just hold it. Against your lash line. Oh, look, she's already into oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, honestly, finding a really fine liner, because I don't like, I mean, especially at the moment, because I'm not going out anywhere, you know, too much around my eyes, but a little bit of something adds such definition. You literally can just hold it along to your lash line. It will deposit colour. It will not budge. And I say to everyone... When they're worried about hooded eyes, you know, when you get to a certain age, yeah. don't worry about the shadow work up there. Just do the work close to your lashes. Right. That's where Just it needs here. to be. That is so good. And, and I've had a lot of questions actually on my Instagram about makeup tips for hooded eyes. 
And that's a really good one. Not worrying so much about the shadow up here, which can emphasise it. We can't fight nature. I no. mean, we shouldn't need to feel bad about that. No, But if no. you do it close to your lower lashes and then you can wing it up, you can do a big, bold one. So it's a fantastic tool for all ages. Got Look at that. Wing on. Wow. <laughs> so oh. our daughters will want to nick this because I don't want to they stop. They totally will. Well, what I'm saying is, you want the young Thank people you. to use it, but you want women of our age and beyond to use yeah. it, and not to think, oh, Love I can't it. use this, I can't use that. Love you it. Know? And then what's in this one? So this is... Okay, so I've always thought about it, like my whole thing is, is edited down. So for someone who doesn't use a liquid eyeliner or still faffing around with that, this is, when you open it, please open it, yep. Liz. Pull it open. Pull it. Ooh. You twist it out. How exciting it's a is this? It's tiny, 1.7. <gasps> wow, look Don't how put tiny it that is. out so far because it might break, but just a little bit like that. It's so good. So it's not as pitch black as your liquid liner. Okay. But if you draw a line, it's dark enough, smudgy enough to put in your waterline or smudge near the lash line. Again, just very Oh, my quick. goodness. Right, okay, this Idiot is going on proof. as well. Idiot proof. Yeah. Oh, that Slap is really it. nice. And it's not and pulling, it's just gliding really easily. It, it will do. And what it is, is it's just a little bit more forgiving. Yeah. So if you don't so you want to have the liquid look. And the biggest thing is, mm -hmm. look at that, when you retract it back... So there were lots of pencils out there, but they didn't retract, and that was my pet peeve. So yeah. I wanted something Completely gone. soft, gentle, retractable, that you could just do a tiny little line tiny. or build up stronger if you yeah. want. I'm going to use a little it. bit of this just on my lower lashes. Gonna, yeah, perfect. Just Perfect. for a tiny bit of definition. I have to say that when I go out, you know, on the rare occasion, if I'm just popping out to the local shop um, and we're yeah. all in masks, the only bit that you see these days are the eyes. Oh, your eyes. <laughs> so I've actually started to use a bit more definition around my eyes. Just and to kind of... That's what, so that's what I'm building. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of bringing out another sort of a smoky coral. That way you'll have a wardrobe of pencils for Love different it. purposes. Because I think people think in wardrobe, oh, I've got a silk thin T-shirt or a camisole and a big cashmere sweater. <laughs> But they never think of that in terms of makeup. They think one thing is going to do three different things. Yeah. Well, a white T-shirt is a white T-shirt is a basic. Yeah. If you want it a bit more elaborate in the evening, you need to be luxurious and silk or sparkly or not. Yeah. If you want something to give you warmth, you put yeah. on something heavier. Yeah. So think of your makeup things the same way. Yeah. Why does it always just have... But I've thought it through and I'm giving you... So you totally have. And there was a question that I saw. There was a question on my Instagram about how you sharpen this. But you don't need to because it's already sharp. It just stays. It just stays. It's a tiny, tiny little thing. You could never sharpen it as sharp as that. It doesn't need to be. And don't push it out too far because it will break because it is delicate. So just a little tiny bit. So enough to work with and you keep pushing it through and, and that's that. Absolutely love it. And then last but not least, we've got these. Tell me about these. Okay, so I started off with the nail kit. So if you open up your nail kit, you can see it's kind of fun and functional. I just put it again yep. in some sort of recyclable bits of plastic. If you open it up, you mm -hmm. can see it's got Ooh. a little nail file. I'm loving the other one. These are all glass crystal from the Czech Republic. Uh, like Czech Republic. Amazing. They're not from China. So it's yeah. very, very firm, thorough, files very nice. gently. Nice. And it seals the edges, especially now as we're at home and having to do our own nails. This is a wonderful tool for men and women. How long would and this last? I mean, does this stay abrasive? Do we need to clean it or look after it in any just, way? Just soapy water, run it under hot water, everything. The only time it won't last, because it is glass, is if you drop it. It's if you drop it, it and break it. It yeah. may break. 
Okay, but this, I'm very excited, Ruby, to be opening this. <gasps> so, feel the two ends, Liz. Feel the two Goodness. ends. It's like matte. They're pumice. They're so pumice. When you, pumice. So, when you push, you know, like, you don't have to cut it or nip your... I'm not a nail technician, but I'm obsessed with nails. Yeah. When you push it, I've got nail varnish on, so it's very hard to see. But if you do it... Push at the ends and you can see you gently take all that dry skin off. Oh, Ruby, I'm Look. loving this. Because I've, I've got a little hoofer stick, but it's just rubber. Yeah. So, you know, Look, once you've pushed it back, but, but then what? Same so, thing. Gently and thoroughly pushes it all back. Yeah. This, when you work on the edges of the nails, you can see it just takes it all off. Wash it, oh, yes. put a bit of oil on or buff, cream buff on. the edge of your nails. I get so many little hangnails, it just drives me crazy. And, of course, you don't want to be clipping them. No, you don't want to be clipping them, and you won't need to. How you fantastic. And this, this is my exciting discovery so of the day. against the edges of your nail. You know, yeah. so not just even at the end. Look, yeah. work, have you, you've got no colour on, have you? No. So just work it into the edges of your nail, and you'll see it takes off that dry skin. Love it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. So and then and then this one, one. But what is this? Okay, so so that is our latest launch. So that is a foot file. <gasps> Bigger. Love there a foot go. file. Feel that edge. Feel the grain. Love a foot file. So dry or wet for people who have diabetes, anything like that, men, women, you just give it a good rub takes all the dead skin off and oh, then yes. just massage a nice bit of oil or cream. And it's so classy and as well. I like the metal ones too, but this well, is really classy. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not Margaret Dabbs. I'm not a, you know... Thing, last thing, just haul up. Yeah. I call them my pots of joy. Oh, I wondered whether these were actually on your website what as these well. Were, they were. They are to put your makeup brushes in, to put your tools in. In the small one, I just put my Q-tips and things like that in there. Yeah. I've given them because when you see that colour, who is not? How's that not going to bring yeah. a smile to your face? Completely. Well, it's well being so, pink. It's my brand colour. So you're spot on here. There you go, there you go. Caroline Hirons puts their pens and papers in there. I've given them to men. They just put their pens and Love it. plastic clips or whatever. We can put our brushes in there. You can put flowers in there. You can put a tea light in there. I call it my pot of joy. So of joy. I'm just expanding small little bits that mean something to me. Yes. And if they're a cosmetic product, I've done the donkey work for you. Yeah. So you can use it with pleasure. Absolutely love it. Oh. It's honestly talk about pots of joy. It's such a joy to have Please you here. Please play with them and then give me your feedback once you've had a chance to play I'm with it. Completely, the way completely you... well. They're going to be absolute regulars in my kit. Nothing wasted here. It's all super, super helpful, super useful. Useful, functional, but you know what? They're a bit classy. If I do say so myself, mm. I like how things look, but not just as gadgets. They've got to perform, otherwise. I can't carry it in my kit and imagine putting them into that those bags to keep them absolutely secure. It's just, it's just, love it absolutely exactly. love it and the whole Darling. brand has mm -hmm. to be used I've always said it's as well as not instead of so you mm -hmm. can use that to use your Mac Bobby Brown Charlotte yeah. Tilbury eyeshadows brow powder this one that one yeah as well as That's and your I website remind us where we can find you what's your website rubyhammer.com 
That's easy. Rubyhammer.com. It's also on Cult Beauty. It's in Harvey Nichols. So, you know. Great. I've got some lovely. Oh my goodness, wasn't that so fabulous? I had no idea we were going to go down a whole menopause rabbit hole there, but just so good. And I'm sorry, Facebook and YouTube, you're going to have to have a quick look at my Instagram to see what Ruby Hammer looks like, because believe me, you will not think that she is about to be 60. How incredible. Lots and lots to chat about. Um, I'm just going to finish off very quickly by saying that the links, obviously, we will put... Thank you very much, Lainey, for putting the links up. You have 15% off everything. Use Liz Loves, all in capitals, on rubyhammer.com. Um, save some extras uh, for me because I think I'm going to be using my discount code for Lily there as well particularly for this little pot of joy. Who doesn't want to receive one of those? Um, just before I go, I wanted to share some really exciting news. And you may have seen, if you were watching this morning, I was talking about cauliflower. So we go from eyeliner to cauliflower in just one easy segue. Um, and I showed this recipe, actually, or I talked about it, about how you can turn a uh, crushed up cauliflower, when you make your cauliflower rice, into a pizza base. Yes, this is a low carb pizza base made with ground up cauliflower, raw cauliflower, which you then bake. And there's a very simple recipe here that uses um, eggs and ground almonds and it is absolutely delicious. I make it a lot and I have put it actually the um, basic recipe on my Instagram if you want to see it. But this recipe is from my Lazar Wellbeing yearbook number one. Now yearbook number one sold out a while back, I think about a year ago, maybe. We do have yearbook two, which is a really beautiful book. I sign them all here from the farm and send them out. So if you want your yearbook two, then please do grab it before that one sells out as well. Um, but yearbook one has, alas, gone and, and it's not being reprinted. So if you would like this, if you haven't got it, obviously a lot of you will already have it, so do please check out that recipe. That pizza recipe uh, with the cauliflower is on page 171. However, there is a way to get it as of today. Today, 1st of February, is the first day that we have gone live with Readly. Now, Readly is an amazing app, and you may have heard me talk about it before. Readly, historically, have only had magazines on their app. And if you want to look at Lizard Wellbeing online, if you want the digital version and lots of historic versions, I think they've got uh, maybe 12 archive copies of Lizard Wellbeing going back over the years. You basically sign up to Readly and we'll pop a link. There's a link in my Instagram bio. So if you go to uh, Instagram, there'll be a blue link that says Linktree or you can go to LizardWellbeing.com. There's a link on there. I know, Lainey, you'll pop a link on Facebook. So you click on that link. And that will give you your first month free. So it's $7.99 to subscribe to Readly. And I've done it. I'm, I'm a subscriber. I subscribed ages ago. It's a really, really good service because what it does is it gives you access to tens of thousands of magazines from all over the world. Everything from Australian Vogue to you can read your hellos. You can read, you know, Golfing Monthly. You can read you know, Football Weekly, if you've got somebody in the house that's into that, you know, it's a really great subscription. You can get your good housekeeping, you can get, you know, Here's Healthy, anything, and Lizard Wellbeing magazine. So we've had this running for a while, so it's a very good way if you want your digital edition. So I love my print, obviously, but sometimes it's handy, you know, on your phone, on your iPad, to have the digital edition that you can just flick onto and look up and think, oh, what was that recipe that Liz had in her magazine, you know, back in December? You know, and, and it's there online for you. Now, today, ta-da, big news. We have managed to put the whole of Yearbook One onto Readly. So if you don't have your yearbook one and you're not going to be able to get it into, in print, you can get it online. Or if you've already got it, 
in print and you just fancy having it online or maybe you're already a subscriber to Readly, go and check it out. If you just put in Liz Earle, you'll see all the magazines will pop up and you'll see um, yearbook one. So if you fancy that recipe, there you go. You can grab it on Readly plus all the others that are in here. And there is just so much. Oh my goodness, I've just spotted one of my favourite chocolate recipes. The chocolate and rosemary madeleines. I'd forgotten that was in yearbook one. That is such a great recipe. Um, oh, this is another great one too. Watercress and pea fritters. So easy. I make a batch of those and I keep them in the freezer. Um, just, oh yeah, uh, woof, 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 yes. My goodness, it's so nice to come back. I haven't actually picked up yearbook one for ages because I know that we haven't got any left. Um, oh, look, cauliflower couscous. That's a good thing to do. Another great low carb dish. So anyway, I'm very excited that today uh, is the launch. Elderflower jellies. Oh, yummy. Might have to make those as well with berries later. So yeah, so click on the link and you will get your um, month free. I don't think you have to add anything if you use the link that we've given. Let me just check on that. Uh, la la la. No, I think you just click on the link. So there you go. Um, also, just to say, I've got some comments coming in here about the lipstick I was just using with Ruby's lovely pencil. So this was Delilah. I'm hoping to be doing a makeover with Delilah because I looked at some of their things, I think was it last week when I was with Beatrice? Great mascara. This was the mascara that I mentioned that I really like. I think they've got two, but this is the one that I particularly love. It's called Intense Day to Night Mascara. Um, that's the Delilah one, okay? And we do have a Liz Loves discount, 20% off everything on Delilah. So if you just put Liz Loves, think all in capitals. Um, and this was one of theirs. So this lipstick is called, uh, what's it called? Muse, Muse, M-U-S-E. So there you go, that colour. Really pretty, isn't it? Like a kind of natural, corally, pinky colour. I think that would suit a lot of people. It's not scary, just gives you a little bit of something without having, you know, too much. It's not too orange. It's not too red. Like that a lot. Thank you very much, Delilah. For that, um, before I go, a couple of quick questions that have come in here. Oh, somebody's having the genetic test. Sandra, on YouTube, you're going in for Life Codex. Let me know how you get on. I've put a little video up about Life Codex, Life Code GX, rather, um, on YouTube. That was the one that I tried to go live on Instagram with Emma Bezik and technology failed us. So I did a separate recording with Emma and it's on YouTube. Um, here we have turmeric lattes being loved. If you're doing my five minutes, maybe you're making your turmeric latte. Maybe you're doing a few push-ups. Maybe you're arranging some flowers, which was my five minutes yesterday. Do please Pop a little picture. Um, if you want to put it on your stories on Instagram or post it, just tag me. You can tag me at Liz Me, or you can use the hashtag my five minutes and then I'll repost them on my stories because it's lovely to share. It really is. And just encourage a bit of positive vibes. Um, my earrings. Yes, these are the mangrove hearts being asked about those. Um, so we've got Valentine's Day obviously coming up. Yeah, we're in February already. Can you believe it? 14th of February, so we've got two weeks, and we have 30% off these. I'll just show you. I was supposed to be in Kenya at the moment. That's where the little mangrove leaf comes from. And I picked these up um, from the beach in Lamu. And that's why they're shaped. They're shaped naturally like little hearts. And I copied the little filigree design of the leaf, natural leaf, and they're made in fair trade. 24 karat vermeil gold, either rose or yellow gold or there's a rhodium which is the silver um, silver colour so yeah love those oh my goodness I feel like I've been up for days I had to have a really early start obviously because I was doing this morning um, I have popped a little post on Lizard Wellbeing so if you miss me on this morning and you'd like to know some of those hints and tips and recipes then just head over to lizardwellbeing.com and you will find them there. I'm going to be back with you on Wednesday. I've got a real great Wellbeing Wednesday to share with you on Wednesday. Something quite different that you won't have heard about before that I think is going to be really big news in the world of wellness and wellbeing. So stay tuned for that. I will be back with you live on Wednesday. Thank you very much for all your hearts 
Um, this one, uh, let me tell you, this is the this is the rose gold. Yeah, this is the rose gold, so it's slightly softer. The yellow is like a really lovely, bright, shiny yellow gold. Anyway, thank you. Thank you for all your hearts. Sending lots of hearts back. I hope that you stay safe and well. And I look forward to seeing you here next time. Lots of love. Take care. Bye-bye.